Since time immemorial, diverse ecosystems have thrived in a stunning secret world. This is the colorful sphagnum moss. Its stems absorb rainwater or melted snow in order to grow. However, its base slowly dies as the plant develops. Yet because it is always underwater, it does not decompose. The resulting plant matter is known as peat. These vast moss carpets can be seen easily from above. Voilà, là, on est dans une tourbière. Ici, on voit hein, par rapport à une prairie, dès qu'on appuie dessus, l'eau, elle est, elle est omniprésente. En dessous de nous, on a de la tourbe. On aura peut-être 2, 3, 4 mètres d'épaisseur de tourbe. La tourbe, c'est une, une accumulation de matière organique qui ne se dégrade pas parce que l'eau est omniprésente. There are two main types of peatlands, fens and bogs. Fen peat is in constant contact with the water table. Its vegetation, which includes sedge grasses, is luxuriant. The high mineral content of the water allows various plants, including orchids, bog star and bog saxifrage to grow. The dense bog peat often bulges. The sphagnum moss that develops here grows slowly, at a rate similar to that of coral. In fact, it takes thousands of years for this type of peat to grow several meters thick. La sphène a la capacité d'aller chercher le peu de minéraux dans le, le milieu pour euh, grandir de quelques millimètres par an, quelques centimètres par millier d'années, pour faire cet édifice qu'on appelle la tourbière. Other fascinating plants, such as sundew, are found. The leaves of this carnivorous plant secrete a shiny liquid that insects mistake for nectar. The plants slowly digest them once they are caught in this gluey substance. Remarkable fauna thrive in these exceptional habitats. Cranberry fritillary and moorland clouded yellow butterflies live among the extremely humid peat bogs. There are also dragonflies, such as the yellow spotted whiteface. The common European adder thrives here. The peatland's high humidity level enables the adder to survive during the hot season without losing its body fluids through evaporation. Biodiversity prospers thanks to the Maya's singular environment. Long ago, people understood that they could use peat for their own needs. Peat taken from the ground and dried in the sun is combustible, so it can be used for heating. Avant, au 19e siècle, quand on n'avait rien d'autre, quand il n'y avait peut-être pas assez de bois ou le bois était trop cher, on euh, prenait plutôt de la tourbe. La valeur calorifique est, est moindre que celle du bois. Mais euh, pendant des siècles, ça a servi. Agricultural development has had a great impact on peatlands since the beginning of the 20th century. Even today, peatlands are drained in certain areas for grazing, to create fields, or for building projects. Yet peatlands have many valuable attributes. They act as sponges to absorb rainwater and melting snow, which helps prevent flooding. During drought, 
They act as reservoirs that slowly release water into our streams. Peatlands play a major role in limiting carbon dioxide emissions. They store 30% of the world's soil carbon. This is twice the amount of carbon in our planet's forests. Using peat and draining peatlands releases the carbon as CO2 and so contributes to climate change. When we drain, it means we increase the level of the nappe phreatic. It will leave access to the air in the turbe. It will make a chemical process. The oxidation will be put on the way. It will be completely decomposed. And it will release the carbon that was in the material vegetal in the form of CO2, so gas carbonic in the atmosphere. The Ramsar Convention is an international treaty for the protection and sustainable development of the world's wetlands. Its goal is to preserve them and the rich biodiversity they support. Peatlands comprise half of the world's wetlands, a reminder of just how important they really are. The states who have signed the Convention engage to guarder the ecological character of these sites and to use them in a durable way. Although the use of peat for fuel is now less common, peatlands are still threatened by drainage, intensive farming and overgrazing. Peat is also overexploited in horticulture, even though compost substracts with similar properties can be found on the market. Only through a shared commitment can we continue to enjoy the magic of peatlands. We can enjoy them without destroying them. Solutions exist. We can all contribute to the conservation of these unique sites that are essential to our survival and that of generations to come. <laughs>